Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Webb and this is an AVS deployment video. Today we're going to get into deploying the AVS private cloud instance. Let's get into some prereqs. First, you've planned your network connectivity. Are you using Express Route, VPN, or SD-WAN? This is a critical component. If you've not planned for this, this will delay your project. Have you provisioned and propagated a slash 22 CIDR block for the service? Have you found your subscription and resource group identified? And have you identified the quota and put it into a support request? If you've done all this, let's jump into your subscription and register the provider first. Go to your subscription, click on resource providers, and search for Microsoft.avs. You should find this unregistered. Register it first. Now let's deploy the private cloud. Click Create. Click on Basics. And now we're going to put in the subscription and resource group that we identified earlier. Give your resource a name. Choose a region that you'd like to deploy it in. Choose the size of host. As of recording this, there's only one node type. And keep in mind that a minimum of three hosts is required to deploy this service. The slash 22 CIDR block is for management components of vSphere, NSXT, vCenter, HCX. Now let's review and create the service. Double check your subscription and resource group and the name that you provided it. This deployment typically takes around four hours. Once the deployment is done, we should see a status that says succeeded for our AVS instance. Next, we're gonna connect it to our on-prem environment. So we're gonna be going into the Express Route circuits to connect it to an existing Express Route circuit that we have for our on-prem environment. First, let's go to authorizations, make an authorization, and take that authorization key, because we're gonna need that in the AVS connection site. Now let's go back to our private cloud instance and go to connectivity and express route with global reach. Here is where we're gonna add our existing express route connection. Put in the express route circuit and then copy and paste your authorization key. If you'd like to double check if your routes are showing and are being propagated by BGP, you can go to your express route circuit, click on the three dots and view the route table as seen here. As long as you see your routes, you should be able to go to the identity tab under the IAVS instance and grab the IP address of vCenter, copy and paste it into your browser, and you should be able to get the vCenter login prompt. Now we're gonna to connect to our VNet. This allows the AVS private cloud to connect to your public cloud resources things like blob storage, Azure files, and other native services that you may want AVS to interact with. First, we need to go into our VNet that we want to connect to, and we want to create a virtual network gateway. Now give it its subscription name, put it in the same region, select the express route radio button, choose the virtual network, and create a new public IP address name. Once you're done creating that, you need to go into the virtual network get gateway and go to connections. Under the connections, click add, give it a name, and under connection type, choose express route. From here, it'll be easiest to go ahead and open up a new tab and open your AVS private cloud instance. Under connectivity, click on express route and request an authorization key. Give it a name and click Create. Once that's been created, copy that key, go back into your other tab, put that into the authorization key field. Open that last tab open again, go back to Express Route, and click on the Express Route URI. Copy that into the Peer Circuit URI. Once that process has been completed, your AVS VMs now have connectivity into native Azure services. That completes our video. Make sure to check out our channel to complete other Azure VMware solution tasks.